stop, stop. Uh, th that's enough. We'll, we'll just leave it. Okay. Uh, I can see that that was going somewhere we hadn't really intended. There was some confusion. Uh, Paul gave Mark a, a folder of articles we weren't using. But that's okay. That's okay. I was still picking up on some really interesting themes there. Well, the other side of the crisis. The effect of the crisis on the real world. Yeah, and, uh, well, that was really interesting. We need to look at these things. Yeah. Um, particularly now, when uh, finance is getting a bad reputation. But uh, I think we've gone deeply enough into that one for now. I think it would be a good time to have a breakdown session. Yeah, so we can hone in on some fundamentals. Let's move into some smaller groups and we'll workshop just one idea playing a little game called the what if game. I give you a concept and you have to ask yourselves what if that concept were a person or a thing, what would it be like? Okay, Ian, Suad and Sartaj, your concept is going to be money. Come over here. Paul and Rose will take care of you. Your concept will be technology. Money. What could we possibly say that's new? OK, shall we give it a go? Yeah. All right, what if you had to present all contemporary technology that the finance world rests upon today as one thing? What would it be like? How hard can it be? Well, what's money like? It's really not like a thing. True, it is always changing. There's something evolving, a dynamic process. Life on Earth, evolving in stages. Money is a single cell organism uh, in primordial goo. Um, and then it develops basic needs. It eats, it grows, it reproduces. It's like a fish, and then it grows legs, and now it's on land, uh, crawling, scurrying, trotting, and always reproducing until it becomes more complex, and then finally it becomes sentient. So it evolves in great leaps until suddenly it's walking upright, a creature conscious of its own existence. And then what does it do? Well, it starts thinking about managing its own growth and consciously engineers its expansion. And then one day it says, I think, therefore I am. And it grows bigger and more powerful. And this self-understanding makes it invest in itself, trade in itself, um, buy itself loan itself, make IOUs to itself, trade those IOUs as if it were itself, always expanding in any way it can imagine and considering nothing but itself. But although it's getting bigger and bigger, it forgets to reproduce itself. It spreads, it sprawls, it grows obese, but it fails to mate until, until one day it realises it, it hasn't reproduced at all. It's gargantuan, but completely sterile. Okay, um, so once upon a time, technology was just a simple machine. It grew up serving people, um, taking in simple inputs and producing simple outputs that gave them comfort and assistance in their daily lives. The machine helped them run their lives so well that people wanted more help. They asked it to feed them, warm them, clothe them, transport them, educate them. They became reliant on the machine. Uh, they started to shape their lives around it and dedicated their work to feeding in inputs and distributing outputs. In fact, they organized their whole society around it. But the machine became so efficient, it needed the people less and less. It began to produce more and more, more than the people could use, more than they could sell. Rejoice, they said, soon there'll be enough for everyone. But there was a problem. The people forgot that if the machine didn't need them, society didn't need them either. The people who had made the machine grew afraid. What if the machine didn't need them? So they began to appease the machine. They began to feed it the things that they had made and feed it the people who had made it. Um, um, yes, so 
and the world became divided between people who were feeding the machine and people who were being fed to it and the machine became insatiable and the more you fed it the more it ate until one day they fed the machine to itself and they all died happily ever after Great, that was really productive. Okay, I'd like to go back to Evergain. Whatever happened to Ian Newman? Is he still in his coma? And are Babel Capital still profiting at his misfortune? The loser of the shell game will spread the plague of indices. The fast forward trade will make your own woes mobility. Eureka! We have to keep feeding the machine so we can feed the people that the machine keeps feeding. So we bought the Italian national grid and we're holding on to it, waiting for the energy prices to spike for, what was it? 10 billion. 10 billion in addition to the, ah, <laughs> my iPhone can't take that many zeros. That's nothing. I bought out IBM's pension scheme three months ago, stripped it to the tune of 60 billion. Can you believe it? Ailing old Fifi faux fum, I made it lay the golden egg. <laughs> wow. To more and better battles. To, to more, more and better, better battles. battles. So no hard feelings then. Yeah. All is fair when life is war. I'm glad I thought to get into the everyone trade when I did. Mm. I managed to cash in exactly when fear about my health was at its highest. Yes, good save. Sometimes everyone's a winner. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Where is our food? We ordered half an hour ago. Oh, check, sir. An old friend told me there's a bird cage at Davos with five parrots in it. And one of the parrots is very fat and has been hoarding all the food, and the others are scrawny and weak. The employees think this is very funny, so they're called the fat bird America. And all the scrawny ones are on Asia, Africa, and South America. Oh, and there's one healthier one in Europe. I have found out the cause of the delay, sir. An incident has affected the input of our kitchen's output. Anyway, America died recently and Europe started to hog all the food and the birds are starting to fight amongst themselves. I said to my friend, this could not be more true to real geopolitics if the ailing bird America had forced all the other birds to keep it alive by first pre-digesting its food. Its output? What kind of incident? There were major shortages at our gourmet organic supplier this afternoon. We're trying to make up the shortfall now. Don't you have any stowed away in the kitchen? No, sir. We only use the freshest ingredients. That was great. Thank you very much. Well, you've identified some fantastic solutions. I think we've had some amazing insights. I detected a real set of themes, too. You mentioned... Uh, what others refer to as affluenza, corporate kleptocracy, which you're very right to do. In order to build a better financial system after the crisis, we need to address just how healthy competition can get out of control when people get a bit greedy. We need more regulations, a firm hand on the rudder, better oversight and less cannibalism. OK, let's wrap up and debrief. We all know it's a difficult time for everyone in finance and you're all clearly very committed to helping us see our way through the bad as well as the good. And that's really appreciated. That's why we've taken the time to carefully prepare these compensation packages. Sorry guys, but I think you'll find everything you need in there to find yourself a more fulfilling position elsewhere. 
It's our desire to treat you just as well going out as coming in. Your exit interview schedules are in the post. <laughs>